I'm going to use this telecommunications equipment to explore some of the practical aspects of beamforming that people often don't think about if they're just analysing beamformers with simulation. And if you're not familiar with beamforming, you can check out the show notes to this video. You'll find a link to my video that explains the concept of beamforming. This equipment is from a company called TMY Tech, and it's a great setup for exploring these practical aspects that we're going to talk about. Also for prototyping communication systems in this millimeter wave, which is going to be the future for mobile communications in 6G and beyond. So at the moment, I've got a transmitter here directly connected to a receiver. And we can see from the software here that with the direct connection, there's minus 31.7 dBm being received. Let's see what it is when we put a cable between the transmitter and the receiver. And here we are with a cable now between the transmitter and receiver, and we can see that the receive power now is minus 32.39 dB. That's half a dB of loss just in a cable. And this is one of the things we need to take account of when we're doing calibration. Of course, if we had a different cable, there would be a different value of loss. And when we're talking about beamforming, we're going to have multiple channels, which means multiple connections between the electronics and the transmitting antenna, each one connected with a piece of either track on a circuit board or could be a cable, depending on the practical implementation. So let's look at the system with the transmitter in the loop, and we've got the multiple channels here, and we'll start looking at what we have to do for each of the different channels. So now I've got the receiver connected directly to one of the four channels on the transmitter. And we can see now when I hit read that we've now got a gain of minus 15.5, which is a stronger signal now because this transmitter is adding gain. You could now step through the different levels of attenuation that are possible in this transmitter uh, in order to, and I'll do that here, in order to test the linearity of the amplifiers that are in the transmitter. And as I click through these steps here, each step corresponds to half a dB of attenuation. Then we can see that the output is indeed uh, decreasing and I'm not doing it at a regular timing here, I'm just showing as a demonstration, but you could use this to test out the linearity of the amplifier. I'm not gonna be doing that here, I'm more interested in this video talking about calibration between the different channels. So let's connect this now to the other channels and see if the loss for each of the channels is the same or if you need to do some calibration. So don't forget, this one is minus 15.55. So now I've got it connected into the second channel and it's also 15.55. So let's see the third channel. And we can see with it connected to the third output that the gain is now minus 15 almost exactly. So there's half a dB of difference between channel one and two and channel three. You need to take account of that in calibration if you're gonna do beamforming that uses all of these channels. Let's see channel four. And now with it connected to port four, we can see that the gain is minus 14.7. So that is a stronger signal than the other channels. When we are designing our beamformer, perhaps in simulation, we are always operating under the assumption that we will have equal power out coming out of each of the channels if we put equal gain in our beamformer. But what we're seeing here is that that's not the case when you take into account the actual hardware. There will always be differences between the gains off each of the channels. So in this case, we would need to attenuate channel four by one dB to get a number that is similar to channel one and channel two. And we would need to attenuate channel three by half a dB. So that means we can set these settings here. We will have all the signals coming out of these ports here with equal power. That's the first part of our calibration, the amplitude calibration. Let's think about the phase calibration now. And to do that, we're going to introduce a coupler here, which is gonna couple the output from two of the ports. And then we're gonna see the relative phase. And we're gonna do that for each of the pairs of the ports. So now I've got two cables connected and they are connected via a coupler. 
and we can see immediately that our received signal is minus 13.86, which is a stronger signal. They're being added together. But we need to see if that's the strongest that it can be. If these two signals are not in phase, then we won't be receiving the strongest that we can. Of course, if they are totally opposite in phase, they would be exactly cancelling each other out. Now, in the ideal world, the signal coming from these two ports here would be in phase. But in manufacturing, in various for various practical reasons, you're not always going to get it exact. So let's explore this here and see if we need to do some phase calibration. We can do that by adjusting this phase here on channel two and keeping channel one constant. So if we advance the phase by one step, and in this system here, there are 64 possible steps, which means 360 divided by 64, you have each step corresponds to 5.6 degrees. So in this case, we did this and the power level dropped. So we do not want to do that to try to match them up. That's obviously going in the wrong direction. That's going towards the, the cancellation type of a phase offset. Instead, let's go the other way. So in this case, we go to channel 63. So let's see if this changes from 13.86. So we go to 63 and it's about the same 13.86. Let's try going further uh, to 62, roughly the same. Uh, if we go to channel 61, we're starting to get a stronger signal. It's not much, but it's a bit stronger. So minus 13.69. Uh, what happens if we keep going? We're going back to the other way. So it appears here that the best offset, calibration offset, so that the phases at this point here are exactly adding up in phase is that we need to have an offset of 61. So 61 corresponds to three phase steps in the negative direction. Uh, and so each phase step was 5.6 degrees. So that's a total of minus 16.9 degrees of phase offset that we are adding to the second channel to do calibration. Because the ideal is you'd like to have at the point where the antenna is going to be, so this is what we're looking at here, you'd like to know that if your beam former says there should be zero, zero equal phase off both, you'd like there to be equal phase at the antenna. In this case, there is only equal phase at the antenna if we add an extra uh, phase offset in our calibration. Now let's think about what we, we're gonna to have to do this for all of the others as well, but I'll just show what happens in an even more extreme case. So now we see on the second channel, I've now got a much longer cable. And so, of course, there's a longer delay, and of course, that's going to mean that we need to do more calibration. Of course, in practice, it would never be this much difference between the two ports. I'm just using this to see what's going on and illustrate the effect. So if we keep going in the direction we were going before, we see that the signal starts dropping. You can see that on the graph. So that's going the wrong way now. Uh, so for this longer cable on channel two, perhaps we have to go in the other direction. So as we go back towards the zero, zero case, uh, then we're getting uh, the signal going up. So let's go back to zero, zero and start going in the other direction. And we can see that the signal is increasing uh, here. So we're getting minus 15.5 here at three, uh, minus 15.4 at four. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Although when we go to five, it starts dropping again. So in this case, we need to have an offset of positive four steps. Uh, so clearly the length of the cable between the uh, where you think that you've got zero, zero and where your actual antenna is going to be is, plays a very important role in making sure that you get complete constructive uh, addition of the two waveforms. Of course, we should also look at where the complete destructive interference happens. So let's perhaps look at that. So if it uh, should be exactly by rotating by 180 degrees, which is 32 uh, steps in this system. So 32 plus four is 36. So if we make it 36, we see that the signal drops. And so this is now where you've got the exact uh, cancellation. And so let's see if 36 is right. Uh, if we make it 37, then it comes up. If we go back to 36 and go to 35, it comes up again. So yes, 36 is the exact 
situation where the two waveforms are exactly cancelling each other out. So uh, as we did with the amplifier uh, in the gains, we can make sure that we do a calibration where we set this, if it were this case here, to be four. And if you have that as set at four, then your beamformer uh, can be um, confident that the output at the antenna here is going to be adding in phase. So that if your beamformer then adds an additional phase, you have to add it in addition to these calibration phases. Now we've only just done it for the pairs one and two, but we have to do it for one and three and one and four and adjust each of the channels three and four in a likewise manner. And then you would have calibrated your beamformer. So hopefully this has given you more insights into some of the practical aspects of implementing beamforming, which you don't think about if you're just doing beamforming in a simulator. If it has been uh, interesting for you, uh, like the video, it helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and you can check out videos coming up on the channel. I'm gonna be using this equipment more to investigate some of the other aspects of millimeter wave communications. And you can check out the webpage that's in the description in the show notes and that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.